Okay, everybody. Magnus just joined over Meet Echo, which just means we are ready to go. Hello, hello. So you have only me yeah. here in person and the bigger version of Magnus on the screen. <laughs> 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 yes, we present today for you, our air director. Um, okay, let's start the session. Uh, this is the note well. Uh, I hope you have seen this by now. Please respect the note well and read the respective documents if you don't know what I'm talking about. This is our agenda today. Uh, we have a one hour slot, so we have like the usual updates. Uh, we have already a note taker that's Martin. Thank you. I will watch the job a little bit. Um, and I think the blue sheets are also running, so that's great. Um, I go through the usual slides, what's going on in the area. And then we have like a few additional points the uh, chairs would like to, uh, the ADs would like to talk about. Um, then we have about like 20 to 25 minutes to talk about what's going on in quick and what's coming next. And then we potentially have an open mic session at the end, depending on how much you want to talk about quick. Uh, so first of all, I just realized that I missed up the slide <laughs> and you can't read half of it. But we would like to uh, thank, thank our um, review team. So that has been working very well for the last like year or two or something like that. Um, we have like three no members. That's Kyle, Kyle Rose, Ian Sweat and Martin Duke. Uh, very welcome on the team and thank you very much for your service. Um, and we have one person stepping down, that's Alison. Um, I don't think I see her yet, but she has been on the, on the area directorate forever. Um, she's doing very good reviews, um, but she said it's time to step down and let the new people do it. So thank you everybody for doing this service. Thank you for doing this valuable reviews. It's very, really good for the ADs. It's really good for the documents. Um, thanks. This is um, the status of the working group. Um, I don't think we have to go through everything in detail. Uh, one announcement is that um, in the next months before the Vancouver meeting, the MPTCP working group will actually close, um, this time for real. Um, they finished their charter, um, they published all the documents um, and any additional or any future MPTCP work can like go back to the TCPM working group into maintenance state. So that's really good. Uh, I also want to announce that I have appointed a new working group chair for NFSB4 working group. So that's actually accomplished. So. Yeah, anything else we need to say about working groups? I'm, I'm looking no. at the screen, it's not very helpful. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't think so, there is. Okay. Yes, we have um, a couple of new documents in the editor queue. This looks like as if we didn't do any work. <laughs> we, there was no new RFC published between um, now and the, and the last meeting, but like they are about to be published, the stuff that was in the editor queue from last time. So there's like as always steady progress uh, with a couple of, of documents. Okay, that's the usual part. A quick chance for like questions? No? Um, yeah, then I would like just to take the opportunity to remind everybody that like we also have a code of conduct in the IETF. Um, and like, I think, especially in the transport area, we have usually a very good atmosphere. I really enjoy working with you guys. Um, but like, we also have some heated discussions sometimes. And, uh, and we all have to remind ourselves from time to time that like we we shape this community. We can influence like in this community how we want to work here and we can be active about it. We can like figure out how we want to behave ourselves, but we can also talk to others about it. And, uh, and we, we all can do something to make this a nicer and better community that we like to, to work in. And that's really important. Um, Magnus and I also talked quite a bit about um, chairing in the transport area, area. So for the last at least two years, uh, we actually didn't get any new working groups. The situation was very stable, um, but that also meant that we couldn't like get any new people into chair positions to get experience about chairing. 
And this is usually a really good opportunity to train up new people who also might become AD at some point. Um, but we like, didn't have this opportunity. So um, we also thought about maybe, you know, rotating chairs a little bit. Um, our thinking was actually that the couple of groups we have that like do long lasting maintenance work, um, that's the groups where you can actually exchange chairs from time to time and where you can like kind of train up new chairs while like small, very focused groups, uh, you might want to have more continuity. Um, but we also, you know, we also, to make any kind of decisions, we try to talk to the chairs, of course, we try to talk to the community, but like also if there's any feedback or any conflicts or problems we should know about, you really need to talk to us uh, and provide input to this. And of course, you can also raise your hand if you would be interested in sharing and, and, and be more involved in that. So we try to like have an eye on that. We try to manage the things as good as possible and we will see if there's some movement in the, in the next months, maybe. Yeah, and I, I want to stress this about you know, providing feedback about shares, etc. I mean, if you're not happy about how sharing situation was happening in working groups, if you don't speak to us or provide feedback also to the shares that you feel comfortable with doing, uh, we can't improve or address the situation. So, but this slide is also up not only to request feedback and to to um, inform you about it, but also to ask you about what your opinions is about what should we do, like how often should we exchange chairs, when should we exchange chairs, should, should we do it at all? Like if you have any thoughts, you have a chance to speak up now if you would like to. Okay, you're all happy? Um, Spencer Dawkins, one of the one of the things that I wish I had done differently as transport area director was explicitly asking for keep lives from people in positions that are serving the community because we you know we recognize that there are other people who could serve, but people don't don't want to let the community down by saying, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, but just you know, it might be it might be helpful to just ask people from you know periodically, um, are you willing to continue in this role? You know, are, are is continuing this role the right thing for you? Because other people could do it, and that might be that might be easier than uh, asking if all the working group chairs want to be rotated. Yeah, so I mean that's what we're trying to do. We're not like firing anybody straight away. Right? <laughs> Uh, we're trying to talk to the chairs now. We don't did it on a very frequent basis, um, but maybe that's something to change. Uh, Colin Jennings, um, XAD, very, very long XAD, IAD with Magnus. Uh, I just, I think this is awesome to do this. I think ITF as a whole should get more to the policy of we replace chairs because we are growing no, new people who are good, not because we were getting rid of old people who were bad. Um, and that would make a much more positive thing and would have to be done systematically um, ac ac across areas. And I mean, many areas, I won't mention this one in particular, have had less than the number of ADs possibility that we want at various times. And we need to grow those people and we get them from the chairs. So we should get, you know, yes. I mean, I don't know, Ronnie, how long have you chaired some of your working groups? Like forever. And you've done an awesome job, but but could we have trained more new people and had a better pool of people? That would be a great thing. So, thank you. This topic came actually up on the ISG on, on Sunday, and I will reflect it back. Um, so transport, we're actually quite small area, and we don't have that many positions. <laughs> um, but that's also a good remark for the general um, consideration. Yeah. Okay, and then we also we, we thought we talked the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the um, ports registry because that's also in the responsibility of the um, transport area or the transport area directors actually. So first of all, we would like to take the opportunity as well to, to say a big thanks to those people as well <laughs> because they do have a constant load. We have like, we get requests like every week and, they're, and they review them and they have to look up documents and they go forth and back with the requesters. So there is actually a significant load here. Thank you very much to these people. Um, but then we've been also uh, trying to be in touch with them and figuring out how to make the process more smooth or like figuring out where the problems are. 
So we've been discussing about potentially also updating some of the guidance documents we have around um, port registries, because we see, for example, very often that we get requests that are only for a, a closed domain and not for the internet as a whole. Um, but also it's not clear, you know, it's not defined somewhere what's the, what's the closed domain or this is actually not spelled out, out explicitly. Uh, we get a lot of requests where people actually don't need a fixed port. They could use some kind of discovery mechanism or some kind of um, dynamic port range. Um, so we would like to provide more guidance about these kind of things. Um, there potentially might be a new document com coming up. So just to make you aware. And to like get the point a little bit closer to you, we also have some numbers. Um, so that's the numbers of requests we got for the last two years. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's a total of about 100, I think, if I don't mess the math completely up. So about 100 requests um, and about a third of them gets assigned. But of course, all of them have to be reviewed. Um, of course, they're like they're not equally spread out over the year. But as you can see, they're actually like requests kind of on a weekly basis, basically. Martin Thompson, one of the things we've observed in other registries is that telling people no just means that they use the code points anyway. Um, why is there such a high proportion of these that are rejected? So actually, this is another thing I would like to thank the experts for because they not only say no, they do a lot of like uh, protocol design consultant there, <laughs> provide right. a lot of feedback because it's just like very random protocol requests we get, right? Everybody thinks they need a port for their little tiny protocol they use between their two computers. So one of the lessons we've learned is that um, if you if you put the experts in the position of defender of the product, the the internet architecture or purity or what have you, um, you end up with this situation right here. And that looks good because it means that you're only getting the protocols that you think are, are legitimate for what some definition of legitimate. I mean, we, we're trusting the judgment of those people on, on that to a large extent. But what we're also doing is driving people into patterns of use that may be destructive, which is camping. So, as I I've said, seen several instances of camping this week. And so I, I don't sure think it's exactly that. the same here because um, we have a lot of cases where some of the mechanisms that has been developed in the ITF to actually discover ports could easily be used and people don't know about it. So, so giving them a hint about it, right? That's like, that's what the experts ah, very often do. Right, and that's, that's very useful. That's the answer I was looking for. Thank yeah. you. I was going to say exactly what Mira says. A lot of this is diverting people to other specs. That means they don't actually need two ports. They maybe only need one or maybe they don't need any. They just need a discovery mechanism. And it's a sparse space. I mean, it's not like it's not like it's filling up tomorrow, but uh, it's a limited space. It's not like an, an infinite space here. Magnus, you want to add something? No, but at the same time, I've, I mean, I, these request rates, etc. I think we still we have we are nowhere near of filling with the current request rate we're nowhere near of filling the available space in the next 50 years <laughs> uh but it is so limited but not that fast so and i think it's something that could be discussed or saying the if we open up the definition we could actually have the discussion in the community of how we want to see certain certain port requests i think for multi for example this about multi-vendor, uh, large, but in some sense, not open internet usages, et cetera, for example. But, so Mark. Oh, you can see me. Hi, Magnus. Yeah. Uh, Mark Nottingham, uh, just a question of clarification. I, I may have missed it, and if I did, I apologize. Is this requests or is this port numbers, these numbers we're seeing here? It's requests. Requests, so it may be more port numbers, thank you. So yeah, but the, the standard policy is a single port for request. Okay. David Black, I wanted to reinforce something that's implicit what Magnus said. The fact that we're looking at 50 years of runway is due in part to this process imposing a reasonable bar on requests so that, so that the available port resources will stretch out that far in the future. If this were first come, first served, we'd be running out of ports now. Jana Engar, to Mark's question, um, it's it's unusual, but we do receive requests that look like updates to existing ports. So 
that's so it's it's, it's not more it's fewer ports so but like part of kind of maybe updating some of the recommendations we have is that this definition about what's you know what's internet wide and when do you need a port and when not it's not very clear so that's definitely something that like the port team is discussing about and we want to more have more clarity on okay i think that's it from like my part and we switch over to mark i will drop out of the queue for a moment until I have it. <laughs> but which one? <laughs> no, that's oh yeah, sure. Why not? Does it work? Okay. Oh, that, that's that's comforting. Um, <clears throat> so hi, my name is Mark Nottingham. I'm one of the chairs of Quick. Are we still doing that? I thought we were over that. Okay. Um, I'm not a transport person, but I do play one on TV. Uh, Lars couldn't be here, so I'm taking his place. Um, so uh, status of the work overall, uh, we have two of the documents in what we call the late stage process. So the working group has agreed to effectively raise the bar for new issues so that we can concentrate our efforts on those documents. Uh, the other two major documents, recovery and HTTP, are about to join it, those documents in the late stage process. And uh, we're seeing the interrupt steadily improving over time. The plan moving forward is, is that we are hoping we can do a working group last call on these documents around the end of the year. That may be a little ambitious, but that's, that's a target right now. And the idea being that, that that may not be the last working group last call on these documents, and I know that's problematic for some, but uh, we want to send a clear signal to the rest of the community that we think that these documents are, are in good shape for review. Let's get the review from the various folks who are gonna use them and operate them and deploy them and implement them to make sure we've got it right. And in the meantime, uh, we want to, after we issue that working group last call, uh, take a period of time where we pause. Uh, we, we don't do a lot of active development on the, on the issues around the, the, the documents, but we try and editorially improve them, but especially get implementation and deployment experience. Uh, the working group really wants to see this protocol get some deployment experience in its current form, in its specified form, before we ship the RFCs. And so we want to take a pause and probably not send it to the ISG until something like the middle of 2020. Um, so this is the current plan for the documents. Of course, all plans can change, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and so this brings up, you know, the notion that, that there, there's a lot of quick-related work that people have questions about. And we've identified a, a number of different kinds of things that, that have come up. Uh, new versions of Quick, extensions to Quick, to Core Quick, applications that use Quick, other than HTTP, of course, and other random things that, that have popped up. And so Lars and I have been, uh, set up a wiki page to track these things uh, on our wiki on GitHub uh, so we can have a, a, a one place where you can see all the quick related things that might happen one day. Uh, this is not an official you know, commitment to, to do any of these things. It's just a, a place to track the status. And so I wanted to go through these things really quickly. That was not intentional. Uh, so first of all, versions. Um, one of the interesting things about quick is, is that uh, uh, the working group sees versioning as, as a core mechanism, that there's an expectation amongst many people that we will have another version of Quick sometime fairly soon, and that we want to be able to exercise versioning in Quick so that that extension point doesn't ossify. And so th th there's a certain amount of desire for this, but we're not quite sure what Quick version two will, will do. Um, if, if, if Quick version two happens soon, it, it would presumably happen in the Quick working group, but of course we'd need to recharter to do that. So that, that, that's kind of versioning. Next up, oh, that's smaller type, sorry. Um, extensions to Quick. So these are generic uh, uh, extensions to Quick. They're not specific to any one application, but they're uh, extending the capability of Quick or doing new things. And there's, there's lots of, of, of interest in this as well. Uh, we do have some capacity opening up to discuss these things in the working group because, as I said, we're going to take a pause for a little while. And so right now, uh, just in this meeting, we started talking about three drafts, uh, quick load balancers, quick version negotiation, and quick datagrams. Uh, and, and 
we're probably going to put out a, a call for adoption on at least some of those very soon. I think we need some revised drafts and some other discussions, but that's the plan for those. There are some other things that people have talked about. Uh, so, for example, the Lost Bits draft we discussed a little bit this week, and Multipath, which is in our charter, but we don't have a, uh, we have a proposal, but we haven't discussed it much yet. And uh, the Zero RTT BDP stuff, which is a little bit newer. Um, those are all things that we can consider and other extensions that you may have in mind. But uh, they're things that we'll need to see a draft for. We'll need to have a discussion as a working group, so, uh, and, and then have a decision about whether or not we want to adopt that. Um, if, if you have one of these things and we haven't already discussed it, come and talk to Lars and I. We'll, we'll, we'll try and assess interest in the group, try and schedule a, a, a time in a meeting, whether it's an interim meeting or in one of the main IETF meetings where you can come and, and present it to the group to get feedback, and, and we'll go through a process to decide whether the group wants to adopt it, and if so, when the appropriate time to do that is. Um, we are currently, our charter is fairly restrictive about doing extensions to Quick, and so to do these things, we need to recharter. Uh, we're just about to start talking about rechartering for these three or some subset of them uh, right now, and for any additional uh, um, extensions, we'd need to do a recharter as well. I think talking to the area directors, having a little bit of friction there is good, just to pace the work of, of the group out, so we don't take on too much at one time. Question? Hi, Mark. David Black. Real, real quick, another one, another one put in your radar screen. There's a second bits draft in the in the same sort of general area of uh, expose some bits so uh, to, to to show what's going on with with the with the transport pro protocol. Um, it's on the THWG uh, agenda today. It's it, it's in about the same area as, lo as the lost bits draft. Okay. So so the best thing to do is to, to add them to that wiki. And I'll have a link at the end. But anything that you think the working group should at least be tracking the status of, add it to that wiki, and, and that's a good place to start. And come talk to us, and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and, and this is definitely not a complete list. I'm sure there's other stuff out there. Um, but but the idea, and talking to the area directors, the idea is, is the locus of, of future extensions to Quick will, will happen in the Quick working group, uh, provided we successfully recharter and, and, and so forth and so on. We need to balance that, of course, with the core Quick version 1 work. That, until it ships, is always going to take priority. But, but this is the plan for extensions. Applications that use Quick. So this is new applications or existing applications mapped to use the Quick protocol as its transport instead of TCP or in addition to TCP. Um, there's a fair amount of interest here as well. Of course, we saw the web transport buff uh, this week, non-working group forming, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, lots of people talking about media in various forms over Quick, uh, various forms of proxying and tunneling over Quick, for example, mask, and other things, DNS over Quick or NetConf over Quick. Um, and so talking to the area directors, I think we've come to an agreement and, and from, from the chair standpoint, you know, we don't want to take on too much of this. Or HTTP3 was a special case because that was our motivating use case, but we don't want to have some super working group for all applications that happen to use one transport. And so the quick working group won't adopt these. Um, you know, I think if, if you want to give people a heads up, sure, send the email to the list. Maybe we can give you some as time permits time in a session if you want to advertise what you're doing, but the locus of those discussions shouldn't happen in the quick working group. Of course, the quick working group will always be available to consult uh, as to the use of quick, or at least while well, the working group's live, um, but we're not going to actually locate those discussions there. The appropriate place to take those is going to be to the applications area, so dispatch or, or the RDDs. Martin. Yeah, Martin Thompson. I think the point here that's critical is that we need to think of quick as both TCP2 and UDP2, and we th this area probably doesn't want to take on all of the work of all of the protocols that's doing that. Well, I could add, I could add any number of protocols to that that list in your other there. Absolutely, and yeah. we that's not going to that's not going to scale out. We're gonna, right. and and just as you know, when we do a new, when we did a new version of HTTP, we we did it in the applications area. You know, likewise. Absolutely. Um, of course, you consult. You make sure that it's using the transport well. Yeah, and I, I think one of the things that will happen here is that the quick working group will will probably necessarily be involved in some of these early efforts, so that we can set down good practices and and mm -hmm. can and make sure that people understand the protocol. Mm -hmm. But as things get rolling, that understanding will spread. Yes. And there's no way that we can continue to control everything. And yes. this area is not really that. And, and that's out. an excellent point, actually. I think there's a lot of stuff we haven't written down in terms of best practices uh, that we'll need to, to work out. And that might mean new documents for us, but they wouldn't be specific to those applications. They'd be distilling the knowledge that we figure out along the way. 
Finally, there's other things, um, things that don't really fit into any of those buckets terribly well. So uh, people, uh, you know, I'm talking about the quick ne network simulator, uh, a queue log logging format, pluginized quick, uh, quick for setcom. Um, lots of different interesting things. I think we just have to take these on a case by case basis. Some of this might belong in ops. For example, um, there are other places. Some of it might just be for people's information. But come and talk to us, talk to their directors, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, for more information, uh, that's the wiki page I mentioned. Um, Quick Working Group, Base Drafts, Wiki, Related Activities. Um, it's also linked from the Quick Working Group homepage. Um, yeah, and so for extensions, like I said, write a draft, bring it to the Quick Working Group. That's a good starting point. For applications, write a draft, bring it to the art 80s So, Martin Thompson, um, bring it to ADs. A lot of the, the areas in the in the ITF have dispatch processes that I think would be more appropriate than than ADs. Sure. And I wouldn't necessarily suggest that we suddenly send every single application that ever wants to use Quick to Miria and Magnus. That yes, I think I said that be back a here. A little unfair yeah. on them. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point to. to so uh, um, emphasize whatever what you had on your application slide is actually spread over the whole ITF. Like uh, NetConf is not in the application error, <laughs> DNS is not in the application error. So it's sure. it's ADs, not only the transport ADs, all ADs. Sure. Um, so Martin sort of, sort of stole my thunder as a brand new dispatch chair. A lot of that stuff I can help dispatch. Uh, and those questions, you know. Um, bring together the sort of art area experts who can help find a home, including knowing when the stuff doesn't belong there. So it's not often not a bad step for an application level protocol like the ones you've enumerated. So Gary Fair's done the quick for sat com bit, just as one thing. Um, Sorry, just, can you speak up just a bit, Corey? Oh yeah, I can speak nice and slowly and clearly if I try. Um, on the quick for sat com, part, just as an example, um, there are a number of different pieces in there. There's the idea of perhaps using a proxy for something, there's the idea of perhaps changing a transport parameter, there's maybe some bits that um, need to be changed or maybe a, a change to some mechanism. Are we doing the right thing putting all that into one bundle and sending it or do you want like a, a scattering of small IDs on all these different things? How are we going to kind of handle this bit intelligently? Because That's I don't think, I think some of it will need new work. Some of it oh. could be just looked at and said, yeah, this can be put in existing work. How do we do it? So uh, is your intent for us to consider this in quick version one? Some bits, but I think I know what to do with that. I think I shall try right. filing an issue for this. Exactly. If it's, if it's for quick version one, create issues, make them as well described and discreet as you can. Um, for things for the future, um, that's a lot more loose right now. I think we'll take it as it comes. Um, if, if you can compose things into drafts that are just extensions, that makes it a lot easier, of course, or just applications or you know, some combination thereof. Uh, if it's best practices, that's a different kind of document. And we have, you know, we have the ops and manageability documents. Um, it's not clear whether other kinds of, of how do you use quick documents are in scope for us, but we can talk about that. R right now, the working group is, is heads down and focused on shipping quick version one. And so, you know, as that gets out of the door and as we have that pause I talked about, we'll have more time to step back and think about other things, hopefully. Yeah, that's a good answer. And I think we do need some sort of process. So thank you. Uh, Spencer Dawkins, um, I noticed one of the things that's not on the list is whatever the operations, operational considerations or management considerations or whatever that is, uh, draft. Um, so I didn't know if you had uh, any thoughts about that. Sure. Um, so that's two drafts and, and we had a quick discussion of it. I did it again. Uh, we had a discussion of those the other day. Um, I think the agreement in the group is, is that, yes, uh, they're still important. Yes, we're still working on them. But uh, uh, because we're heads down on quick, they're not getting quite as much attention as they deserve right now. Again, that's something that we look at working on in the next phase. And I think we still want to ship those as we ship the core documents to, to the ISG. I think that's still the plan. Yeah, those are working group items already, Spencer. Yes. From yeah. the beginning. So I guess one of the questions I was going to ask, and please don't answer it now, but uh, one of the issues with the management and operational considerations uh, discussion was that there was no place else to have it. 
and um, the media operations working group recently chartered made it two thirds of the way through their first meeting before they started talking about troubleshooting quick. There is a place to send this work, and make you know, and maybe that maybe that's a good thing to do if you're talking about rechartering anyway. You all will do the right thing. I know that, but I wanted to, I, I I just wanted to offer that as a possibility. I, I think that's interesting. Um, I guess I, I, I like the documents in the group right now, provided we actually put the effort in, because the knowledge is in the group right now. So, yeah. David Skenazi, um, Quick enthusiast. Um, actually, I love Quick so much that uh, I'm an author on two of those Quick extensions and on an application over Quick. And I just shared a buff on something over Quick this week. I really love Quick. Uh, <laughs> I thank you. Um, on a lot of these proposals, um, especially at previous ITFs, um, we brought them to things like dispatch. Um, and kind of a lot of the feedback we got was, this sounds interesting, this is cool, but not yet. And what I'm hearing here sounds like an opening of the floodgates to some extent, which I'm loving. Maybe that's not the right term, Mark looks uneasy. Um, but as in, maybe the not yet might become a, oh, how about now? Um, so I guess my question might be more for Maria as a policy from, you know, as our responsible AD, how about now? Yes. So, That's why yes, we can now? Here, yes. Sweet. Awesome. Just wanted no. to have that double check because, you know, I've kind of heard that in private, but it's great that that's the case. Let's do it. So, the, the, I don't know if I ever said not yet, but the, um, what we've been trying previously is really to focus on getting version one out the door concentrating the energy of like the people in the quick working group and the people in this area on doing this work task. And we are basically there. So we should also do some work around it and we should use the protocols we develop. So yes. Uh, First of all, I wanted to say the same thing Spencer mentioned about the You didn't discuss the operability and the uh, management, the, the, the draft that, that uh, the are already there, but I think they should be also reviewed probably in, opera, in ops area because they have to do there. The other thing is about the applications. If we're going to do them, I mean, the, some of them require changes in what's currently in V1 of, uh, of Quick. And the question is, is are there any guidelines or there be any guidelines, what you can change, what not, how it will be handled when it's going to be going to other working group also, or you're counting that the same people will go and be the Quick police or whatever. Well, so Quick police is an interesting concept and I, I wanna talk about that after the meeting. But uh, I, I suspect a number of the same people will still be involved in these efforts. Um, generally speaking, you know, if, if you're changing quick version one, it's either an extension or a new version. And, and the extension should be not specific to an application. Um, and so it, it's gonna be a case by case thing deciding what the right fit is, I think. Uh, <clears throat> Ted Hardy, I, I was gonna say quick enthusiast, but David has proven to me that I am merely a tepid supporter of quick. <laughs> He, he says it's a big tent, but he's really got the, the tallest chair in that tent, at least today. Um, I, I wanted to talk about two things, uh, one of which I, I think is uh, the stupid idea of Ferry visiting me on uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, and one of which might be more sensible. Uh, there was a joke a while back that we needed a quick area, um, because so much different work was being inspired by it. Earlier today, we heard about some work in TLS to do some retconning of their record layer to make it look more like uh, what happened in the, the split that ended up being uh, between the TLS handshake and the quick record layer. We've heard all of these applications. We've heard all of these things uh, that wants to look at how you manage different applications on quick. And so I'm going to suggest that we actually consider running an experiment for a couple of IETFs and having a quick dispatch working session uh, as an additional session to the to the regular uh, sessions early in the week so that people who are part of this flood can figure out where their particular eddy should go. Uh, I think some of the work would stay here in transport, some of the stuff in particular around multipath or congestion controllers 
um, might really belong here. A great deal more of it might end up uh, in operations or applications. And a, a short meeting that didn't try and concentrate the expertise, um, a, a short meeting that concentrated the expertise uh, that that is inherent in that core of quick people, the quick police that you were just talking about, uh, in one room early in the week might help clarify a whole bunch of stuff later. And as a you know, two session experiment, it might be worth trying. As I said, that that's the bad idea fairy for Thursday afternoon idea. Uh, the, I think, much more practical, realistic right now idea is we are at the moment of uh, a crise de succès, right? We saw this was HTTP. Uh, it was built for one thing, and suddenly people wanted to do all kinds of other different things with it, and it went uh, wide, very wide across the, the landscape of the Internet, uh, becoming by becoming so wide, the new waste of the Internet was one of those strange things. Uh, we think this is going to happen again. We think it's going to happen here. And this is one of the few times I think we can predict it. Um, and since we can predict it this time, I am actually going to suggest that whatever efforts, whether they're the stupid idea fairies efforts or something else we can do to try and make sure people understand what they're doing to the protocol as well as with it is really important right now. And that may mean that during that six-month period while we're waiting for everything to settle <coughs> down, we we write a much abbreviated version of the Hitchhiker's Guide to Quick. Um, this is something that that you you did for SIP and others have done for other things. So they understood how the parts fit together and what they were doing. And it it is a lot of work to write a Hitchhiker's Guide like that. But if we do see what we expect to see, I think the work would pay off. So you are talking about writing this document for um, application designers? I think the whole point of a hitchhiker's guide is it's, it's written for any of the audiences who plan to take up that technology. And it's not just the applications, but anybody who might be saying, ah, I want to do this, but I want datagrams with it. Or I, I want to do this, but I need multipath for it. It's how all the pieces fit together so that if they have an understanding from TCP and how MPTCP works, they see the differences early and, uh, and connected to the ways they fit together. Um, I, I think it has to be a lot simpler than the Hitchhiker's Guide to SIP in order to be done in that six month period, but it might be a valuable use of the time. So the applicability statement and as well as the manageability statement were two documents that were actually um, meant to be, be directed at like a different audience than the people that implement Quick, right? It's not what you, it's not quite what you're looking for, um, but it's part it, of it's the It's definitely whole not what I'm talking about. I yeah. will send you a pointer to the Hitchhiker's Guide that I'm thinking of as an example. But Ted, you can also write a blog post. Spencer Dawkins, just following up on that really quickly. Um, imagine the TCP roadmap or the SIP Hitchhiker's Guide or the Hitchhiker's Guide to SIP. If work on that has started before there were 150 RFCs, which is kind of the case in both for both of those protocols. So I think that's I I'd like to really support Ted's suggestion that people think about that. Colin Jennings. I'm also a quick enthusiast, though I'm in the pale shadow of David, um, but I, I hope to aspire. I'm, I'm motivated. Um, I'm thrilled to see Quick is open for business with things like Datagram moving forward because that enables the things I want to do. So I am taking this opportunity to make a shameless plug for um, some work we're doing over uh, in art around how to encapsulate audio and video real-time media into um, Quick or web transports or various forms of that. We're trying figuring that out. And if you guys um, want to join us, we presented in dispatch on this rip draft uh, earlier this week, and we're working towards BOF in Vancouver that we plan to run. So if you're interested in that type of area, ping me and I will um, show you where we are. Thanks. Adam is working on that mailing list as we speak. Jonathan Lennox, so I have an abstract question and then a concrete instantiation of that question. So <laughs> the abstract question is, you know, as we do applications, we'll probably develop, you know, requirements that it's not clear to us what they actually need, whether they need requirements or implementation guidance or even API guidance. And we've got to figure out how to do that. The particular the thing that I'm looking at is a number of applications um, 
of things like web transport need low latency congestion control. And I don't know if that's something where quick protocol would need to change, if quick implementations need to change, or just the API is such that you know you get callbacks when it's safe to send with low latency needs to change. And I think that needs guidance from the quick group. And what's the best way to get that guidance? Huh. <laughs> so my, my personal comment is actually, if you look actually for low latency congestion control, that's protocol independent, right? Maybe. Uh, uh, if, maybe if the, the, if the protocol gives be... you the tools you need for it, yes. Right. Which is uh, which I've heard conflicting reports about whether Quick right. gives you things like the per packet arrival timestamps uh, that RMCAT wants, for instance. I think the answer I can give you right now is is that you know the people you want to be talking to are going to be generally located in some place like the Quick Working Group. Mm -hmm. Now's probably not a great time to talk to them about it. Uh, in terms of, of the workload and their focus. Okay. Um, next year, probably. Okay. Whether the quick working group is the right forum for that actual discussion, TBD. Okay. Yeah, Martin Thompson. I think what we're recognizing here is that the quick working group has a limited capacity to do additional work in this phase between now, when we're sort of close to finished, and when we really finish on this thing. And so there's gonna be some need to manage the priority of the various items in, in this process. I tend to think that Ted's idea might work given the timing of it. Uh, cool. Because in Vancouver and the next meeting after that, which I forget where it is, uh, Madrid, we should be, um, we should be getting a few more of these things. And Gori's question is a really interesting one because there's a, there's a unit of work that says, I might want to tweak some things in quick, but I also have an application or something along those lines. And, and so having a group like that discuss specifically that and a, a quick dispatch really does sound like it's got all the wrong mm -hmm. connotations, but I'm sure we can come up with a name for, for a group like that and right. it'll uh, be effective. I so, mean, effectively, yeah. that's what we've offered folks in the um, interim in Zurich. So but yeah, I, I wanted a caution there, um, and that, and that is that this area has very specific expertise in the development of transport protocols and congestion control and the application thereof, and and yeah. I mean, talking about multipath and all, all of those related things. Some of these people coming along will come into that group and and go. I want to. I want to do this new application on top of Quick, and the immediate response then needs to be um, go talk to the dispatch chairs in the art area because this is clearly an art area thing. Now, some of that stuff we can do easily because it's pretty obvious. Obviously, the things that that uh, Colin is trying to do are going to happen in art. There's I don't see any other way that that's going to happen, but uh, there's going to need to be a little bit of judgment exercised here. Uh, otherwise, someone's going to get overloaded, and I don't want to have that happen. Absolutely. Hi, uh, Brian Trammell. I came up here to say something different, and then I just ended up coming up to endorse Ted's idea. Um, I think that uh, I, I think we probably don't want to end up with a uh, quick dispatch or slow and lingering or whatever we call it um, permanently. But there is, well, I mean, he said that quick dispatch was bad. So what's the opposite of a quick dispatch is it's worse actually. Um, the, um, the issue here, the reason that I wouldn't just say, hey, we have dispatch, we have that process, we have that thing, it just works, let's do that, is something that I haven't really heard surfaced is that the interface that most other transport protocols provide to the application is here's a byte stream and a hope and a prayer. Um, take your thing, slap it on the byte stream, everything is good or not. The interface that Quick provides to the application is um, significantly more complicated and undefined. Um, so this is why at the beginning of things, like people are gonna say, oh, I want an application and I think I need to hack Quick because I don't know what the interface to that thing is. We discussed in the Quicking Working Group whether or not we wanted to take on the work to do an API draft, right? Like, so there was a little bit of discussion about whether we're gonna take the applicability draft and put this API draft around it and I think we kind of, nobody had any energy energy around that because I don't think we understood what that interface looked like. I, I still think we don't quite understand what that interface looks like. And I would like to say that one of the 
other goals of having a non-dispatch dispatch working group is to watch what comes through that working group and use that to figure out what that interface looks like. Because I think we're going to learn something through that process and we can write that down in an RFC. I, I guess I just volunteered to help with that. Um, or we can, you know, it goes into the, or it just goes into sort of the lore and we figure out what it is and it's not that complicated and we don't need to write it down anywhere and then we just have a process. But I would, I would say that one of the things we should do with that process is figure out what that interface is because it is going to change how the people have to work with each other. Just to respond to that quickly, I, I, I agree. This, one of the things in the back of my head is, is that this week we've seen a couple of examples of people trying to use HTTP2 and extend HTTP2 in ways that are broken or, or harmful. And that's because they didn't have good guidance like that. You're not, you're not calling anyone out, are you? I would never do that. I, I would say that in some cases the, the, the answer is don't do that. That's going to be painful. But I think that if, like, in quick, since we don't know what that is yet, like, so we're H2, right. we know it's what worse. painful looks like. Yeah. For quick, we don't know what painful is yet. Yeah. So, like, something that looks painful now might actually be something that we need to work on the interface. So, yeah. This is Patrick. Um, I like quick too. Um, actually, I'm really, really excited about a number of things it's going to do that I think are really going to change, particularly web use cases. Um, and this working group has been really unique in a couple of different ways. Um, <laughs> one is the extended focus and volume of work that's been done in this group is really, really remarkable. If you follow it closely, um, it is, I mean, a fire hose does not really begin to describe what's going on. Um, and the, I find it hard to simply summarize without writing the PRs. I can't read the PRs as fast as other people are writing the PRs. It's a little freaky. Um, but the fact that it's composed across really three areas has been, I think, a very successful experiment in large and necessary for where it is. Um, and yet, I don't feel the work on all three of those aspects has proceeded at the same pace within the working group. Um, it has been... Um, by necessity, I think, and appropriately so, a little transport heavy going through. And the um, the application bits and the security bits uh, have been developed a little bit later and with less broad input. We managed to put the right voices in there, I think, to get a high quality product, but it's gonna be a hard thing to sustain like that. Um, and so going forward, I think the right answer is more coordination than centralization as you're talking about and farming that work out farther. And so some citations we can use on this, I think um, the web transport one is a, is a good thing to think about in, the, in that model. Um, it does have transport in its name, but it's much more like web sockets than it is um, like Quick itself, right? It has to polyfill, it has with uh, other web-like mechanisms, it has to be concerned about the web security model and a whole bunch of different aspects. And, you know, so yes, it's a good example of something that uses Quick and it uses Quick in a fairly close way to um, to native, you can model that in your head in a bunch of different ways of exactly how that maps together. Um, but the expertise to bring a new thing into existence um, probably comes from somewhere else. And so I, I, I think farming this out and really sort of opening the floodgates, it's a great time. So that, that's great. Um, just to, sorry, just to respond to that very briefly, uh, you bring to mind very much that one of the things that Lars and I have observed is, is that we, we see the implementers and the people working on the specs getting close to the point of exhaustion. Um, this has been a long slog. It's a lot of work. And while I know that people are excited about, and some of the same people are excited about new applications or extensions, and there's gonna be effort put in there, we can't assume that this group of people and group of implementers is gonna be available for infinite amount, amounts of work. Uh, we saw this with HP2 as well. Um, Jana Iyengar. Um, I'd want people not to get emotionally attached to protocols. They tend to not reciprocate your feelings. Um, no, they don't. Um, uh, but I, I still appear to say that I, I, it took me a little, little while, but I do like the idea of having a quick dispatch sort of a thing. Uh, it seems to make sense. And the other, uh, on to the other point about congestion control uh, with ICCRG uh, chair hat on, I'd recommend that people who have ideas uh, on doing different congestion controllers, even if the problem is motivated and driven by uh, having quick as a transport, the problem really, if it's congestion control, belongs in a congestion control forum. And the ICCRG is a place you may want to bring it to.
David Black, probably not so much for you, Marcus, for uh, the ADs and, and secondarily, everybody, everybody in the room. There was mention earlier of some dispatch-like functionality for transport. That might be a really good idea. I can think of at least three discussions I've been involved in, in this week that have, uh, uh, that have included, okay, so where would we work on this thing in the transport area or the, or, or the IETF in general? I'll also observe the TSVWG as the catch-all working for the transport area is bursting at the th at the seams. Based on what we did this week, we'd ask for six hours in Vancouver, which ain't going to happen. Okay, thank you very much for the feedback. That was really good. Um, I hope we could also provide you some useful information from our side. Uh, we would definitely consider uh, the feedback you've, feedback you've provided, also the idea about uh, quick dispatch. Um, maybe not for the next meeting because we have like we have the feeling we have a plan for the things that we know that are coming up. Um, but <laughs> but maybe we are also wrong, right? Um, but it's very good ideas, and um, I don't have anything else from my side. So we could have another open mic or we could have a real open mic if you have any other questions to the transport ads and uh, Magnus could. Beam him again if you want him to, or we could just all go home for today. Okay, I guess that's the end of the session. Thank you very much.